Welcome to Wise Beyond Bitcoin, where you come for the crypto neo news, education, and opportunities. My name is Lucas. My name is Ryan. And today we're going to talk about, well, a little bit of education, some news, and definitely some opportunities in the world of decentralized finance. We talk about DeFi protocols all the time. Well, we talk about DeFi, we talk about macro economic outlook, and there's a little bit of this and a little bit of that in today's video because we're going to go over how to leverage crypto, how to use your crypto, how your crypto can be used in the real world, that that bridge between the digital economy and the real world economy. And what um, what about DeFi? Despite we hear a lot about um, certain protocols that are crashing and burning due to uh, poor tokenomics or mismanagement, that there are actually many projects in blockchain and crypto that still work and function perfectly and are doing their job trudging along. And DeFi, in many ways, in, in blockchain and crypto, is thriving despite all the turmoil in the markets surrounding. So you know what to do. This is not financial advice or medical advice or legal advice or commercial advice. It's just educational entertainment information. And if you like to stay abreast of the latest innovative projects, what's going on in blockchain and crypto, we have playlists, DeFi tutorials to walk you through how to participate in these opportunities and how to do your own research, because that's what this is all about. It's education. We will leave all links below. And yeah, I, let's, uh, they covered all pretty much. Yeah, I think you did. Okay. So we, uh, we came across an interesting article. Uh, this is a about how to leverage cryptocurrencies in order to buy real world assets. And there's, you know, there's various ways to do this, of course. Um, and we're gonna try to, we're gonna highlight on one that's maybe not as understood and, and as utilized, or you might say it's been slept on. Uh, and we're gonna walk through it and discuss what are some of the options? What can you do with your crypto? Because one of the big one of the big criticisms is is that these are just trinkets or it's like a Ponzi scheme or a, a um, you hear a greater fool's theory is at work here that you know the idea that the only thing you can do with your crypto is hope that someone dumber than you comes along later and pays a higher price for it and you can you know offload it to them and so there it's all this short term kind of thinking that is at play here and I we wanted to highlight this as it shows that there are people using these assets in a, in a way that's, that uh, shows their long-term value. And of course, uh, shows that they can, there's things you can do with DeFi that just really can't be done in, tr in the traditional financial system, especially with, by people who might have uh, humble means, right? Who aren't the, the, uh, the, big, the big elite, uh, wealthy, you know, accredited investors, right? There's people who have humble means, but they would like to play some of these reindeer games that the wealthy use and DeFi and cryptocurrency is one way they can do that. And just and so like so you we'll, said, let's we'll talk about that. Despite a lot of these uh, poorly built projects, uh, some of these things that may be Ponzi schemes built out there using blockchain, there's a lot for every good project, there's probably 99 uh, or hundred, you know, horrible projects out there. But the reality right. is that Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, blockchain was used to be a technology, it was created to be something to bank the unbanked and to provide right. opportunities for those people who didn't have opportunities. And it's great to point out and see that like Bitcoin, like Uniswap, AMMs, we are seeing curve and we'll, and we'll talk about some of these others, but that these projects that are built using blockchain technology that are open source, that are transparent, that use collateral, that, that are properly built they function they continue to work and like you said they are they offer people an opportunity to engage in finance in a way that in traditional models and traditional uh, markets only certain people could benefit and now it's more egalitarian and spreading the the, the returns the abundance that can be made and allowing the people the individuals to benefit directly for the value that they add into the system. That's basically the idea of DeFi is that in traditional banks, they may be able to use 
your assets or liabilities to make more loans, to make more money, but you don't get a return for that value that they're able to generate. And in DeFi, you're able to generate a return directly for the value that you add. And that's one of the strengths of blockchain and crypto. So, you know, I think what's cool about some of these projects we're going to mention too, is that these are, I would say, when you look at things that are made to run at the protocol level, um, that they they hit that decentralized, what's that that marker? De they they pass the test, the litmus test. They they meet the decentralized yeah. litmus test for. Um, well, I guess we'll this will be another conversation, but it's how how to determine and what do we call. Right, is it security? Is it a commodity or right. something different? Right, yeah, right. that's a different video. That's a different video. Uh, we'll get into later. This one. We're going to talk about how to take your crypto and buy things with it whether in this example we're talking about a piano and a, and a house and the uh one of the platforms that's that's use, useful for this is called abracadabra.money and what you can do with abracadabra is really cool in 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 conjunction with curve there's a uh, there's a lot of opportunities here so we'll walk through kind of what what's happening what this example uh, discusses is a particular curve, um, L, uh, particular curve three asset pool. Uh, it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, and USDC, mm -hmm. right? And if, if you scroll down to the buying a condo with Abracadabra, it'll mm -hmm. kind of walk you through what happens here. And what's called the Tri Crypto 2 um, product on Curve. And it is, uh, a, it's basically, it pays an APY. Uh, so you own this LP, you, you have to deposit some equal amounts of USDT, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. And you and for doing that, you earn this LP token, and it, it will earn a APY of 1.27% roughly. And with this token, you can then bring it on over to Abracadabra and deposit it, right? And then and as, as, as collateral, and then borrow MIM against that collateral. And it, the platform, the protocol will give you the option of borrowing up to 90% of the value of your collateral. Of course, that would be very risky because if the value of your collateral were to fall below uh, 10% or lower, uh, more than 10%, then that, that 90% um, book to, or loan to book value would be, would be violated and it would trigger a, uh, a liquidation. So you would lose your, your, your tokens, you'd lose the ETH and the Bitcoin and the USDT, but you would keep uh, the MIM. So you, you, so you would lose your collateral essentially. And uh, the, so that, that's important to know. So, you know, when you're choosing how much to borrow, you would want to only borrow the amount that you feel uh, leaves you safe and protected from any kind of um, downward movement in the collateral because you don't want to be liquidated, right? That's a loss of a, of a lot of your wealth. And the, so I think, you know, and, and the especially question. in the market now, we're looking at prices have gone down of, of Bitcoin and many other uh, blockchain cryptos have plummeted um, along with traditional finance. So you have to be aware of the risks. And uh, for that reason, maybe 90% collateral ratio or, or something high, you definitely would um, not want to engage in. And we definitely feel that the markets can correct. This is not financial advice and saying, go out right. there and leverage up because that's how you quickly, if you're not paying attention, you get liquidated. But what we are saying is that there are protocols out here where you can, if you're following the market and you want to take advantage of an opportunity and you have the collateral to back it and, and you would like to have some of your crypto working for you in that sense, then you can do so and engage and on different blockchains. And you saw many different collateral assets that you can use right. to, um, to create a uh, now, this is another thing I was going to mention at the beginning of the video. Stable coins have been a topic and stable coin risk and centralized stable coins and collateral and algorithmic stable coins, which we've done many videos on. And we've talked about Abracadabra a long, long time ago back in the day. Yes. So um, it's important to point out that because of its well-built mechanics and tokenomics and requiring over collateralization, this is where... MIM, this is where the creation of this stable coin comes about. And it has not depegged and had issues so far. It's been uh, very strong in the world of decentralized yeah. finance 
DeFi and decentralized stablecoin um, options. So that that's another great thing to point out is that with MIM, you do have one of the stronger stablecoin uh, in DeFi pro protocol. Decentralized. Decentralized, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, but this is an example, like you said, you can come in here and you can take positions and you can borrow against it. And now you didn't um, sell anything, you you took out a loan. And right, and that's the key point is that when you don't sell your position, you aren't subject to capital gains taxes, right? So that loan, when you deposit it in your bank, that's that's a that's seven hundred or however much money you know. Example here is seven hundred thousand, but of course most people won't have that. But whatever the sum is, that's not income, right? That's not so you won't be taxed on that. That's just a loan. And one more thing to to, to mention in this is that, and this you can see this under the section uh, entitled "The Math Behind a Profitable DeFi Loan." Um, you, you can look at the amount of in, the loan has an interest rate like any loan, right? And in this case, it's a fixed per, uh, three per, three point five percent, which um, that's a fixed rate. But the cool thing here is that the you're actually still earning a yield on that original tri crypto Bitcoin ETH USD DC position that that uh, that pool that that uh, LP still is still earning a yield. And then there's also a yield. You're also earning money for borrowing. There's a there's actually an interest rate you get for that. So the yield on that tri crypto um, asset that's being held as collateral that is actually covering the loan, the interest on the loan, and and, and, it, and even leaves money left over. And the math is explained in this article if you want to see the details. But the idea here is that when you borrow from a, a, uh, a mainstream traditional institution, if you're, say, somebody who can post collateral, you have enough, you're trusted, you're an accredited investor, you're a trusted customer, and they'll actually give you a line of credit. One thing they won't do is pay you interest on the collateral. So you won't be earning a yield on the collateral. That will be, that will be abandoned, and not abandoned, but that will be you know, held basically and you won't be able to use it in another way to earn a yield off of it. So there's, you know, there's a lot to be said about that. The fact that it, you know, you're earning money with the collateral as well, which helps cover the, the loan, the repayment. That's the beauty of DeFi. Um, you're able to benefit from the value that you bring to the table and on, on both the front end, the borrowing and on the lending side. And I was also going to show, obviously, be careful. Oh, this is the article, the part of the article, like, like you were mentioning. This is the, the essence of DeFi, right? Compared to centralized financial um, markets where wealthy people have been borrowing against their assets, deferring taxes, and remaining invested for generations through accounts and personal brokers at the likes of JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs. Now anyone can do it, and then a fraction of the time. That's the real magic behind DeFi. The real magic is allowing anyone to have exposure to these opportunities to allow their collateral to work for them. And what I was gonna mention also is that if the collateral does liquidate and, and if the prices of the collateral go down to where um, you know, your, your collateral is, is taken by the protocol, the benefit to that also is that you've in essence taken profit. Right. I mean, if you haven't, if you still have those stable coins, you, yeah, you, you still you, have the MIM. You, in essence, you still have all of your stable coins in MIM. It's baked in. They don't come after you later saying, we need anything back. It's the collateral was there in the first place. So once that is taken, and you go back and you can repurchase at a lower level. If you feel like it and you think that's a good opportunity, that's one of the benefits to going this route as well. Um, but this is that's a good point. The reason why we bring this up is that. When you see Abracadabra work successfully and being able to take digital assets from change and algorithmically uh, mint out, so to speak, a, a stable coin um, with these digital assets, other dApps can be built to do the same thing. Just like there's more than one AMM after Uniswap, there's, there's Curve works, Ave works, and these are... Um, these are the building blocks at the moment. These are the great building blocks of decentralized finance and they continue to work just fine. So while you might hear of 
centralized unfinished protocols get a lot of attention for um, Ponzi schemes or pump and dumps or rug pulls or poorly designed projects. What's not getting enough attention I feel are the solid projects that have been around longer and have been uh, built well like Bitcoin and Ethereum and Curve and Abracadabra and Aave. Many, many projects are showing what can be done to bring that more equitable, egalitarian financial model with blockchain technology, which is really, in essence, what this is all about, being able to bring all the services that these financial intermediaries used to do in a more efficient, in a more harmonious way. At the end of the day, there's a lot less fees. You're cutting out a lot less people. There's a lot less, you know, waste and, and resources to have to compensate. And you're still creating a way for people to put things on a ledger, lock it up for a period of time, allow others to uh, borrow or, you know, uh, lend. And it's, it's, um, it's nice to see what works amidst all those that don't. And we learn a lot from what doesn't work as well. So it's great to see the, the projects that fail and why they fail and what separates those that fail from those that succeed. That's, and I, that's also, we'll get into another video, we've talked about regulation and oversight, but we can see how many of these projects that are built, they, were, they did so without any oversight and regulation to determine what was in people's best interest. We uh, allow, let the market determine in that regard. Right. We have a couple other lending protocols to highlight, right? Ave is one. There's Ave has been around Tom. for a long time. Absolutely, it's another one of those that bringing a lot of different blockchains together and the digital assets, for lack of a better term, cryptocurrencies, tokens, coins, and being able to lock it up in this DeFi. They're one of the definitely one of the stronger protocols, the foundation of DeFi, and they were originally built on Ethereum, but of course now they are available all over the EVM. And maybe right. soon even we might see to the IBC. We'll talk about that because the EVM isn't the only place. We've got this link as well. We'll leave the DeFi pulse just to kind of get an idea. There's a few websites like this where you can look at layer twos or look at uh, DeFi protocols and, and see what market they're in, whether it's a decentralized exchange, they are lending, what else, derivatives. Oh, we talked about DYDX and what they're bringing over to the IBC. That's an example of a DeFi protocol leaving Ethereum and coming over to the IBC for decentralized reasons and interoperability. Right. Um, Compound yeah. is another one. It's a big name in, this, Compound. in the Ethereum world for yes. lending. Yep. Absolutely. So the point is, is that a lot of these projects that um, have been functioning continue to function without a hiccup. And you're going to see deleveraging just because prices fall and just because we see um, a, a, a volatility that's always been known. I mean, that's obviously that volatility and, and risk exists in traditional finance as well. And when the rates go up right. and when margins are called and people have to liquidate their assets, we see we see prices, prices drop fall. and we see other companies and hedge funds swoop in and buy those assets at pennies on the dollar when they see that there's some long-term value there. Hopefully the whole point of this is to look for that. We look at macro fundamentals. We're looking for innovation in blockchain and crypto. This is none of this that we talk about is trading advice because we would get wrecked. We're not traders. We're looking for, we're looking for the fundamentals as this new technology changes the economy and the way we transact, what we you know, as currencies or exchange information, there are a lot of different markets that are to be affected, supply chain and, and more with blockchain and crypto. So it's exciting to be a part of this journey. If you'd like to be a part of it with us, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe notification bell and we will keep you abreast yep. of the latest developments because that's where there's opportunity to benefit in the next bull market or the next time there's a flood of energy and investment into the new innovative projects it's good to know where and what those new innovative projects are how to take advantage of them speaking of before we go we are talking about a lot of these amms and dexes and lending protocols we'll do another video on this walking through it soon because we have talked about sienna network and secret network because 
what are they able to do that these others well, cannot? They have a fundamental privacy option that you just won't see in other blockchains, uh, especially other smart contract platforms. Um, Sienna Lind is a new new offering that has been launched recently on on Sienna Network, and this is the place where you can deposit and borrow, earn rewards, and uh, it's a uh, there's a lot of options here coming up. I'm, I see staked secret, a, a secret derivative that's in uh, in the works over at Shade. So lots of cool things to cover. We're gonna do a walkthrough on this later on, but just wanted to kind of- And I'm sure, you know, this is I'm out. sure that the uh, uh, secret UST is probably uh, not um, being used as much anymore or, or still functioning. No. So there are some other stable coins to join. Oh, well, there's some right here, obviously. Right. But um, yeah, this let's, is let's make it clear what these S uh, assets are, right? So you have S secret, you have S USDC, S Monero. That means a secret, that stands for secret. So secret Monero, secret ETH, secret secret. And that is the privacy um, platform. That's the privacy layer of the blockchain, right? Of the secret network. So those are all transactions that are not publicly available right this private metadata and it's all built on the privacy layer. A, yeah on the privacy layer so you you can bring assets from other chains onto secret and use them privately anonymously you so can engage in DeFi, you can lock it up you can borrow you can lend and all of it's done not on a public blockchain where anyone can look and see everything that you've ever done and that's just kind of weird in information and ledgers in general. I mean, banks and companies, no one just puts all their ledgers out there for everyone to be able to see. And it's nice right. to allow for the security and the robustness of blockchain and crypto with the layer of privacy built in. So there's definitely something to look forward to here. This is the borrow tab. And you can see when you make your deposits that you have a lot that you can borrow Monero, borrow wrapped Bitcoin, borrow any of these and you get to do so with privacy. So we'll, we'll yeah. do another follow-up and a walkthrough tutorial as well, because definitely fans of innovation, blockchain and privacy coupled with smart contract technology is definitely something to look forward to in the future as more companies, more decentralized applications are built that we feel strongly that privacy is going to be valued greatly. And we'll talk about those projects and yeah. protocols that are building on it. We do it a lot. We've got playlists dedicated to Secret Network and a lot of the other applications that are built. We'll follow up, keep you abreast of those if you'd like to know what's happening with privacy and blockchain and with blockchain in general and what's going on in the world relating to the economy and the markets and crypto. And I think that's about it. I think that's got it, yeah. All right. See you well, on the next one. Until the next time, have a beautiful day. Namaste, y'all.